So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can get AIS information into Open Plotter with just a simple SDR or software defined radio for around £30. Connect your Pi to the internet and head to the settings menu in Open Plotter. You'll need to press refresh to make sure that the latest packages are available. And then you need to look for SDR VHF. Select this and press install. Once the installation process is finished, go back to the start menu, click open plotter and select SDR VHF. AIS is installed by default. Clicking AIS and pressing the edit menu allows you to change various settings on the device. We're going to leave these settings at auto at the moment, but we are going to start our calibration process. Clicking on the device and then pressing change next to zero allows you to change the name of the device. The first step here is to get the PPM value. In around 30 seconds, you should start to see the initial values being recorded. This process can take some time. It's advised to leave this running for a couple of hours. I ended up running mine for around 40 minutes and that started to give a more stable value, which I then used to proceed to the next step. End the process or close the window and enter your value into the PPM field. This handy picture from the Open Plotter documentation shows the GSM bands for the various countries. For me, that's 900. Select the device and in the bands field, enter the appropriate GSM band for your country. I'm leaving the game field on zero in order to proceed. Pressing get channel allows the software to go off and find AIS signals. Here it's now doing a search to find the channel that's got the highest output. Enter this channel into the box and hit get PPM. This time the PPM value must be a whole number, so in my case it's zero. Now that the calibration is completed, ensure that the process has been started. Now it's time to head over to Open Plotter and wait for the information to come in. With the latest version, you no longer need to set a connection. That's automatically done for you. So within a few minutes, I started to see an AIS target. Within a few minutes, more targets appeared and eventually the icons went green, which meant I'd got more information about that particular target. Here you can see a name, a track and some information about where that target's going. This target has got a course over the ground information. This, however, was incorrect because that target wasn't moving. I then thought I would zoom out a little bit to see actually how far I could see with this very small aerial. It turns out I can only see my marina and the marina next door, which is pretty good considering the size of the aerial. This menu might be available a different way, but if you click on the options and then show menu bar, the AIS tab appears at the top. This is really useful because it has a lot of information in it once you go onto it. Click AIS target list. So I hope that's been useful. The next step for me is to look at splitting the main aerial out so that I can plug the AIS receiver into that and get more range. Um, but I'd like to use the system a little bit more before I do that.